Welcome once again. Right now we're in the book of Romans chapter 2, verses 1 through 16. The topic is justification by the law. Yeah, yeah, you've heard it right. Justification by the law. Let's read it. Verse 1. Therefore you are without excuse, O man, whoever you are who judge. For in that which you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the same things. Today, if you just say anything is wrong, okay? I mean, if you say that so-and-so did something wrong, they'll say, who are you to judge? Well, you see, the way it works is this way. If you are a thief, don't condemn someone else for being a thief because you're just basically condemning yourself. But if you're not a thief, but you do some other thing that's wrong, you're not condemning yourself if you say thievery is wrong because you don't do it. You might do a dozen other different sins. So you do have power to judge in that one area because you don't do it, okay? So there's a few things that a lot of people don't understand. First of all, let's say, for example, you got somebody over here that uses the, no the name of the Lord in vain, and you got someone else that steals, okay? So the person that uses the name of the Lord in vain, and he can judge someone else for stealing because he doesn't steal, so that doesn't come back on him, okay? Uh, you know, people don't really understand anymore, you know, that person who uses the name of the Lord in vain but doesn't steal and he condemns someone else for stealing, somebody might say, well, who are you to judge? Well, he is got some kind of position to judge against thievery because he's not involved in it. On the other hand, there are people who used to do something but don't presently do it. They can judge other people. They can condemn other people for doing what they used to do. Why? Because they don't do it anymore. You see, a lot of people don't understand the concept of how God works. If you used to be a thief, but you're not anymore, you have repented, that means God does not count your past thievery against you because you have changed, okay? The world doesn't understand that. They say, who are you to judge? You used to be a thief all the time. Well, the, the thing is, if you used to be a thief, then that means you're not anymore, which means you can condemn someone else for doing it because you don't do it anymore, okay? You are covered. You, are, you have repented from that sin, and God doesn't count that against you. Why should anybody else count that against you? So a lot of people just like to throw a blanket thing, say, who are you to judge? Well, really, the people who say, who are you to judge, who are they to judge? Because they have condemned the act of judging, and in so doing, they judge themselves, okay? So it's quite a hypocrisy going on. If someone says to you, who are you to judge? Well, if you are not presently doing the act that you condemn, you have the right to do it. You have the right to judge against that sin because you're not presently entangled in it. You can even help someone else out of that sin because if you used to do it, or you don't do it, then you're in the position to help someone out of it, okay? If you are entangled in it right now, then it's hard for you to help anybody else out of it because you're in it yourself, okay? It's like one inmate trying to get another inmate out of jail when they're both locked up. How does that work, okay? Uh, you, one person needs to be free in order to free the other one. Verse two, we know that the judgment of God is according to truth against those who practice such things. Do you think this, O man who judges those who practice such things and do the same? And see, this is the key phrase right here. You do the same. I mean, you can be doing, you know, a hundred other things that are sinful, but this one particular thing that you don't do, presently you don't do, you are in the position of, of telling someone else that's wrong. You can say, I know what's wrong. I, that's why I don't do it. You can condemn it. You can judge that. But if you, for example, have a habit of taking the Lord's name in vain, then you don't have any right to judge anybody else, condemn anybody else for doing it. I, I mean, you can do that, but that judgment will just come right back on you because you're doing it. Do you think this, O oh man, who judges those who practice such things and do the same? 
do, not used to do, but presently do the same, that you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and patience, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? In other words, don't despise God's goodness, forbearance, and patience because it is through his goodness, forbearance, and patience that repentance comes, okay? Just don't fall into the sin, okay? Don't get indifferent to the sin in the meantime. But according to your hardness and unrepentant heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath, revelation, and of the righteous judgment of God, who, quote, will pay back to everyone according to their works, unquote. That is found in Psalm 62, verse 12, and Proverbs 24, verse 12. To those who by perseverance in well-doing Seek for glory, honor, and incorruptibility, eternal life. But those who are self-seeking, there's another key phrase, self-seeking, and don't obey the truth. It's one thing, you see, to just know the truth, but it's another thing to obey the truth. See, Paul makes it clear here. It's not about just mental knowledge. It's about obedience. And don't obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness will be wrath, indignation, oppression, and anguish on every soul of man who does evil. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. Wow, that's interesting. So we've got the blessings of God that comes to the Jew first and then to the Gentile. We've got the gospel. We've got the Messiah that comes to the Jew first. It's priority on the Jew, then to the Gentile, okay? First the Jew, then the Gentile. Likewise, when it comes to the judgment of God, the judgment of God will come upon the Jew first. I mean, they should know better, right? And then to the Gentile. Verse 10, but glory, honor, and peace go to every man who does good. To the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For there is no partiality with God. For as many as have sinned without the law will also perish without the law. So just because you don't know Torah doesn't get you off the hook. You will still die. You will still perish if you sin. As many as have sinned under the law will be judged by the law. And this is the phrase right here we're looking for. For it isn't the hearers of the law who are righteous before God. But who does God say is justified here? The doers of the law will be justified. (gasps) Did Paul say that? Did he really? For when Gentiles who don't have the law, the Torah, do by nature the things of the law, In other words, just by their own conscience, they do what the law says they should do. These, not having the Torah, are a Torah unto themselves, in that they show the work of the Torah written in their hearts, their conscience testifying with them, and their thoughts among themselves, accusing or else excusing them. In the day when God will judge the secrets of men according to my good news by Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah. It's not merely the hearers of the law that are justified, but it is the doers of the law that will be justified. Thank you, Paul. Until next time. Seek God with all your heart, and if you do, you will find him. What a glorious and exciting and life-changing experience that is. Call upon him in your walk with the Lord, and he will show you. He will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.